Hello and welcome to a quite long, um, what, what I'm going to call replay rather than quick play because this isn't a quick play of Space Crusade. Now Space Crusade on the Commodore 64 was one of the games which blew my mind. Uh, I had the board game and um, just to own the computer version, just to have that computer experience where you could move the people on screen and interact with AI opponents, it's made it more real, even though it was less real. If you see what I mean, I'm just going to go through a game I had the other day, I played, and it takes a while, this is going to be quite a long video, I've actually speeded this video up to 150% of its normal speed, because otherwise We'd be here all bloody night. But it's definitely not a quick play. A quick play is where I play a game and I talk as I'm playing the game, frustrations and all. This is just me watching back footage of me playing Space Crusade in this instance on the Commodore 64 with enormous amounts of unfettered glee and just talking over the top. So that's probably why I'm going to call it a replay. I'm not even sure if I'll put this on the main channel. This will probably go on Nostalgia Nerd Extra. I don't know, because, you know, it's a, an unknown concept. It's an unknown concept, con, concept of me just sitting here drinking a cup of tea, which I am from my I Love Computer Games mug, which I got in 1995, I think, when I got my first PC. It's done well. It's survived a lot of dishwasher use and washing up. Haven't smashed it yet, which is quite impressive. So, because this video is so long, there's going to be a lot of rambling. I might go off tangent. I might leave the room. Who knows? Because this is reality. This is what the world is about. This is the nub of the matter. So this is Space Crusade. Now Space Crusade was a board game collaboration between Milton Bradley Games and Games Workshop, the two big giants of the gaming board game universe. And Space Crusade was kind of an attempt by Milton Bradley to make the Warhammer universe more accessible for the average family player youngster and it was kind of like Space Hulk but with simplified rules a smaller board which wasn't sprawling and huge uh, but it was still firmly in the Warhammer 40,000 universe it just appealed to me the box art appealed to me the box art was some bloke there was two versions of the box art the original was some bloke uh, marine commander because commanders don't have helmets for some reason you think that would leave them more vulnerable but I don't know they just think oh I'm fucking awesome I don't need my helmet anymore that's for those losers so they lose their helmet maybe all commanders have had their helmets shot off in battle and they just are too cheap to buy new ones I don't know but the first board game front was very atmospheric it had a gene stealer coming from the left or the right and like other marines and then I don't know why but they replaced it with one by a different artist which was more of an up close face of the commander and it, it was kind of similar it just never really appealed mate it's, it probably didn't appeal as much because my space crusade board game box was the original art and not the recreated art but just looking at that box art and like reading the manuals and the story behind it just brought me into this universe. A bit like, you know, uh, Spectrum games or Commodore games in the 80s where you saw the cover of the game and it kind of created the world of the game for you. And even if the game was nothing like what the box art was like, which it never was, it still created that imaginary world for you and it allowed you to expand your imagination into that box art enforced world. So, I mean, the board game of Space Crusade was awesome. I played it a lot, as long as, as many times as my parents would indulge me or whoever was available to play, sometimes friends. Normally against my dad, he um, wasn't his favourite game, I don't think. But to get the Commodore version was great because I could play it whenever I wanted and I could play it 
I didn't need any other players to play it, and because you didn't have to set things up, there was no tedium involved in that, and it was like you were playing against this alien force, because all the players were controlled by the computer, so it felt like, you know, you were actually playing it like it should be. I mean, it took a while to load. This game takes a long time to load. It's two sides of a cassette. The initial load is quite long, and then you have to select your language, and then there's another load, and then there's a load after you select your mission. Uh, the mission this time, by the way, is I think we need to get a secret weapon. You see that room on the right-hand side on the map? There's, there's like a little blip in that right-hand side room. We need to re retrieve that and then bring it back to the place we came in at over on the left. Fairly simple, you might think. But then, after a while, the board starts teeming with alien foes. Or gene stealers, Gretchen, Orcs, Android, if there's an Android. And the dreaded Dreadnought, which is the big bastard, which looks like Ed 209, but takes up four spaces. And he is more than likely near the end in the room with the secret weapon. So the best strategy is to go straight to that room, which I haven't really done here. I've kind of sprawled out a bit, but then I'll, I'll get my forces back together. We'll get to that room and we need to get the weapon and haul ass. Doesn't pan out as well as I'd hoped for in this game, but this is the first time I've played Space Crusade for a long time. I used to spend ages playing this on my Commodore 64. Ah. Nice swig of tea. Yeah, ages. Like, locked in my room. Tea used to be ready. My mum used to say, dinner's ready. Yeah, I'll eat it while I'm playing this. Because you, you can't, you get, you get addicted. You get drawn into these games. And, and especially games like this, where it's a strategy game and you're on a, a, a lengthy campaign. You can't just leave to have dinner. It's crazy shit. You know, you're on a mission. I haven't got time for that. So... The premise of the video game is it converts the board game really quite well. So we've got these top-down sections where we're moving our marines about like so. You can click on which marine you want. Each one has a limited number of spaces they can move on each turn. You can fire after moving or before moving. You can open doors. You can scan. Uh, the commander gets one move, one square. He can move further than the others, I believe. Commander also has five life points, so he can get killed five times effectively. The other marines get killed once and they're dead. And how you play is you roll dice, or in this one it's just grids of numbers, and if the attacker's dice is one more than the defender's dice, and that depends on what weapons you're using, you, you either have white dice, which have lower values or red dice if you're using a heavy weapon weapon to attack or defend. If the attacker gets one point more because the marines have one armor point, then you die. Or if you're a commander and you lose one armor point, then you lose one life and you, you're down to four or whatever. Anyway, as you can see, I'm in this corridor and I've met some foes because blips are uncovered as you move around. And we get this 3D view when we fight, which is re I, I really like that as a nice touch because it kind of brought the board game back to life and it shows you what happens in a kind of isometric uh, view. It's, it's good that the whole game isn't in that view because it would be awkward to see what's going on. It would be difficult to navigate. So we've got this top down view and then when fighting occurs and someone dies, you get a 3D perspective and then you see who's blown up. It's a nice touch. It really kind of uh, made the game feel more lifelike and exciting. Yeah, we'll go with exciting. As you can see, each Marine's got different weapons. He's got a plasma gun. You can see on the top right-hand side. Uh, one of them's also got like a missile launcher. Uh, the commander's got either a plasma gun or a heavy bolter. Which is, you know, on the board game, you you had to pick either a your, your commander's weapon to start with. He could either ha have a power fist and a sword or a heavy bolter. On this one, you can choose. He can either have a plasma gun or a heavy bolter. Bit of a difference between the board game and the video game there. I think I scanned a minute ago, and when you scan all these blips, all the blips which are in surrounding rooms, even if, even if you haven't walked into those rooms, appear. Now that was a tactical error, because if I hadn't, have, I wouldn't have gone into these rooms otherwise, and so these blips 
never have been exposed. But you know, shit happens when you're in the the heat of tactical warfare. As you can see there, that's the secret weapon we're aiming for. It's like a different st style of blip token. It appears on the board. I've got all my marines packed into a little alleyway at the moment. Probably not the best tactical position, but shit happens. Oh, my computer's just told me that my hard drive space is low. I've got like three terabytes of space on this disc, but no, no, hard disk space is low. I really need to clean up my disc. It's just filled with crap. Videos and the like. Hmm. Interesting. I've just picked a rock out of my trainer. It looks like a meteorite. It's very black. Interesting. Let me just put that down on the side. It might be a bit of tar. Anyway, another sip of tea. Ah. See, as you can see now, all the alien badasses are moving in on my team's location. Ah, which isn't particularly useful. And we've got orcs and androids. Uh, Grinch. I mean, Gretchens are the weakest. You can take them out pretty darn easily. Orcs are the next. There's a Gretchen. And then we have uh, androids and Chaos Marines. They're pretty badass. And then we get um, Chaos Marines with heavy weapons like the missile launchers. And then we get the Dreadnought. You don't want to meet a Dreadnought on a dark night. Let me just look up some info on Space Crusade while, while I'm here. Space Crusade. Mistletoe and wine. Alright. Space Crusade. Good old Wikipedia. So it came out in 1990, Space Crusade. I think I got it for that Christmas. The illustrator were Jim Burns and David Scree. And as I was mentioning earlier, I think Jim Burns did the original box art. Yeah, then David Squee came along and updated it. Still don't know why that was. I'm going to find out. Space Crusade is an adventure board game produced by Milton Bradley together with Games Workshop and was first made in 1990. While produced in the UK and available in some other countries including Finland, Ireland, France, Denmark, Australia and New Zealand, it was never sold in North America. I'm really surprised by that. I'm always surprised as well, but Warhammer is like a, a UK thing. I mean, it's big in America, but started in UK. In Germany, Italy, Belgium and the Netherlands, the game is known as Star Quest. No, I'm not liking that. I wonder why. Was, that, was there religious connotations around Crusade? It is the sister game to Hero Quest. Another good game. Never had it when I was younger. Wanted it. Also produced by Milton Bradley and Games Workshop, it uses many of the concepts of the Games Workshop Space Hulk and Warhammer 40,000 games, but at a much simpler level of gameplay. The game was designed by Steve Ben Stephen Baker. It doesn't tell you about the box art why it changed, because it wasn't. It's not like it was out for years. It was out for like a a couple of years. Why would you need to change the box art unless there was a a major issue? Maybe maybe Jim Burns got all arsy and he was like, I want more money for my beautiful drawings. Probably didn't. Ah, I'll finish my tea now. Marine players have the advantage of heavy weapons. Ah, video game. Gremlin Graphics Software Limited released the Space Crusade video game version of the game in early 1992. It was available on Atari, ST, IBM PC, Amiga, Spectrum, Commodore 64 and Amiga. I had um, it on MS-DOS. I think I had it on the Amiga as well, but the Commodore 64 one was my favourite. I just got it on the other machines because I loved it so much. The Voyage Beyond... Yeah, that's when I sold my Commodore 64. I sold my Commodore 64 for like 20 quid. With loads of games back in the uh, early 90s. Uh, so I could upgrade to an Amiga. You know, the things we do. The things we do at the time. 
Yeah, so this received an expansion called The Voyage Beyond. It is considered a faithful conversion of a board game, with a board that could be viewed in 2D or isometric pro projection views. Well, yeah, not all the time. The Zerg Spectrum version was voted number 24 in your Sinclair Reader's top 100 games of all time. You know, I've never played the Spectrum version. I want to play the Spectrum version. I love the Spectrum. I'm going to look at some screenshots of the Spectrum version. Space Crusade, Spectrum. Oh, it looks bloody good. Oh, yeah, I have seen this before. It looks color. It looks more colorful than the Commodore version. It looks cleaner. Oh, obviously, because the Spectrum can do higher resolution, so it's probably much more suited for this type of game. And color clash isn't really an issue here, is it? Oh, there's the Amiga one. Oh my God! Look at that. The bloke's face. The Spectrum art of the commander's face at the start. And the art we see, the art we see at the start of this version, the Commodore version, is the second board game's box art, not the first as well. Maybe it was all reproduced for when the computer versions came out to make it in line with that. I don't know. But the, the Spectrum art, in-game art, of that scene is hilarious. The commander looks like he's some sort of latex... Sex toy. I, I, you need to see that to believe it. All right, let's go back. So, Space Crusade is a 1992 computer game. Yeah, it was one of the earliest video games of the Warhammer series. It's taken them a long time, hasn't it, to make a video game, a Warhammer video game, which is like a first-person perspective from the eyes of like the Terminator or Marines. I mean, I know that Space Hulk Deathwing is coming out. That looks awesome. And that's what I'm massively looking forward to that. And I've played Space Crusade. No, not Space Crusade. Space Marines. The third person perspective game. And that was pretty darn good. But yeah, it's surprising they got round to... You know, a lot of the Warhammer games have been tactical games. It'd be nice to have some nice first person shooter games. Also, why is there not a Warhammer film? Like a proper feature film? How awesome would that be? With space marines fighting orcs and gene stealers. How absolutely amazing would that be? I mean, they've, they've done like CGI movies, which are a bit mediocre, but you know, why, why isn't there one? That'd be awesome. I should really watch what's going on. As we can see, my marines are stuck in a corridor at the moment. We've uncovered the Dreadnought. He is in the, 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 the room, the final room, with the secret weapon, standing guard. But at this point, it's looking a bit dire, isn't it? All my marines are stuck in this little area. And there's Chaos Marines and Orcs gathering around. And that Dreadnought is going to be a hard-ass bastard to get through in himself. Marines generally have the advantage, but when you're outgunned by so many alien enemies it's quite hard to get done androids are pretty tough bastards look he got three with his heavy weapon luckily my defense was also three so i survive on this occasion but we've got orco coming in and my defense is zero so i'm gonna die by the hands of an orc there we go i have exploded orcs are, i've got three marines dead already i've got two left the commander and a guy with just a light bolter. So my heavy weapons, because you start with people with heavy weapons, like one guy has a chain gun, and one guy has the missile launcher, one guy has the plasma rifle. They are all dead. I've just got my light bolter, bolter guy and my commander with his heavy bolter. Not looking good, is it? But this is a really addictive game. I only recorded this footage because I wanted a little bit of footage for my top 7 Commodore 64 games video which I did on Friday. So I wanted just to get a bit of footage, prefer hopefully with a Dreadnought in, but I just kept going because it's such a fun addictive game to play. I think this took, if you're running it in normal speed, it's about 40 minutes this game took me to play. Because I've speeded it up you'd expect that to be about 30 minutes because it's one and a half speed. Might be a bit less because I've also cut out bits where the tape loads and all that malarkey. Marky larky. Ba, 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 ba. I've got a... 
Where's my marines? So I've got one in with the uh, dreadnought. Who's got? Okay, I'll, one of them has picked up the secret weapon. I sent my light bolter guy in, but then all the alien bastards are maneuvering their way around to set up strategic attacking positions and wipe me out. Which is nice, isn't it? You just go into a, a Hulk, a space. Uh, uh, you know, a Hulk is a derelict ship, isn't it? You go into a Hulk to do your order and all these. I thought these ships were supposed to be derelict. Maybe it's not a Hulk in Space Crusade. Maybe you're just jumping onto an alien ship and you're just surrounded by aliens. I mean, we're invading their ship. It's fair enough for going to get annoyed. I mean, who's the, who's the real baddies in this game? Is it the Marines? Or is it is it these aliens? We've invaded their ship to try and steal one of their weapons. No wonder they're pissed. Like a true reflection of the real world, isn't it? Who's the enemy? Often it's not who we perceive it to be. Or who the media tells us it is. Chaos Marine. Come on. Bring it on. You fat, armoured cretin. Hey, I'm de See, I'm dead. I'm down to one Marine. My commander is the only guy left. And he hasn't even got a helmet. So how long is he going to survive for? It's a farce. It's an absolute farce. I can use my command button, but see, that is a command order, but it's pretty useless because I haven't got anyone to command anymore. But you can, like, deal command cards at the start of your turn if you have them. And they're randomly chosen at the start, like in the board game. And I think my command card then was a bolter one, which allows you to fire twice if you've got a bolter. But they're all dead, so that was a waste of the order, really. Also, at the start of the alien's turn, they get to draw a card, and that... Me uh, often involves. Oh, who's dying? Oh, an orc. And that often involves stitching up the marines. So the aliens might draw a card which is like calling in or something, which means that my commander has to call in to home for the next two goes so he can't move, which is what happened there, I think. He had to report in because the aliens got a reporting card. If you look now. The alien should draw a card. See the little alien face in the top right? Oh, maybe not. Maybe it happens at the end of the turn. Sometimes I don't think there is a card, but usually there's a card drawn which stitches me up. Anyway, my com if you look in the th I suspect is isometric view, my commander does have a helmet on the isometric view, which is a bit of a... Strange thing. May, uh, I imagine it's because they couldn't. Bob, Bob, Dreadnought's taken me on. They couldn't be bothered to draw another sprite of a commander, so they just went with the standard marine sprite. And I don't blame them. It's a commendable game in its own right. Here comes some sort of chaos marine coming to cause unprecedented amounts of chaos. Here comes an android, probably. Just pack him round me. Just get as close as you can, guys. Just pack in. Come on. Why not? Yep. Yeah. Don't worry. I like it. I'll be Dreadnought. In fact, no one even needs to turn around to fight. If you look at the isometric view or the top-down view, they just... The Dreadnought is facing the complete opposite direction to me, but yet he can still fire his guns straight into my face. Quite a, quite a unique skill there. The alien go is taking a long time because he's got lots of players to move around the board. Oh, it's so slow. Alright, orc, bring it on. So we've got the orc having a go. Another orc having a go because he thinks he's hard. He's got one. My, my defense was one, so I should take him out. That's what you get for messing with me, motherfucker. All right, my go. So, heavy bolter. Fire it. So you can re-roll your score with a heavy weapon. Or you can re-roll one of the dies. It's actually quite fun watching this game. It's just, uh, it's just a great game 
it's an immersive game, even from a replay perspective. Okay, I've taken down an orc. There's Ed 209, or the Dreadnought. I think he's just taken me out. Hey, my commander is down. Game over. Please rewind the tape to the beginning of side two and press play. Press fire. So you have to reload the uh, game, the menu screen. And then once you've done that, which I've speeded up considerably. Once you've done that, you get your score of 48. You died heroically serving the Imperium. A full honor guard watches as your coffin is ceremoniously set adrift into the tranquility of space. What well, lots of long words there. There we go. We're back to the main menu. And you can select another mission. You can select an expansion mission if you have one. Or if you don't, you press it and then you screw the entire game up as it tries to look for a data tape you don't have. Which is what I did. Anyway, thanks for watching this um, replay video. And uh, if you like it, drop a comment below. If you don't, don't. Well, you can, but I probably won't read it. Or I might read it and then I might cry. Who knows? Thanks for watching. See you soon.